everyone and welcome to another My Thoughts of the Week or Rambly Thoughts of the Week. This time I want to look at something that is coming up now. It is finally the show season. It is upon us and that means that people can actually get out in reasonably better weather and take their pride and joy, some of their classic cars, modern classic cars that they cherish, uh, that they would not otherwise want to drive uh, in the wintry salty weather and the dirty weather um, and a much better time of the year where more people will also be taking their prized possessions. I have to say one thing though, there are an awful lot of people who actually drive their older cars and classics to car shows and car, well, essentially car meets more or less within the winter season. I, I just don't find that personally a very enjoyable exercise. It's cold, it's rough, everyone's got colds and I would not ascertain any idea of driving actually any of my cars in the salt. The only car that I would do that with is Beatrix. And then I'd feel very guilty that because she's the most usable car at the moment in my fleet, I feel very, very, very guilty about using that at this time of the year. Um, I'll make sure that I wash off any salt, fresh water, get a hose. It's You have to do it. Um, to make sure that the car remains in the condition it's in, uh, even after all the rust protection. And that's the only car that I would ever entertain driving to any meets um, in the winter period. But now we're coming to the time of the year where everything is a bit more brighter. That opens the door out for the Fiesta and the Focus this year. Now, me personally, it's going to be a rough balance. I've been having a look at my diary, having a look at what shows are out there, and it's definitely a topic that I haven't really covered before, but it's something that's never too far away from my mind. When you're looking at dates and times and you're trying to picture out where you could be, this year it's going to be very car heavy for me in the summer. And the idea of me doing so much work and doing so much work on Ruby in the cold months is to simply enjoy the car in the summer months. I do not want to be doing vast amounts of work in the summer months, even though being warmer weather, it is more conducive to working on your car. But that's not the way I work. I actually tend to do my work in the worst parts of the year, the coldest and the most unattractive parts of the year, the hardest time of the year, to get out, put your clothes on, your overalls, get your gloves on and go outside with a load of tools, get absolutely freezing cold. Actually, that's not the truth. I take it from me. Everyone's constitution is different. We've all got different metabolisms. But I'll tell you something. When you work on cars, you're cold at first, but when you start moving around, and believe you me, I work hard. I work fast, I work hard. I'm doing all the camera work for you guys. I'm thinking about that as well, but I'm also concentrating. Believe you me, you don't get cold because you focus in on the job in hand and you just get it done. Um, so for me, it's not a massive big deal working outside of this time of the year. I'd rather do that than the opposite way around um, because what is the winter? So, you know, I, I just think, so you drive your cars more or less, you know, your, your cherished cars in the summer. But when the summer is finished, you know, September sort of time, October, you stop using those cars because the show season has ended. There's a few car meets on, but really it's, that's the end for your cherished car. If you've got more than one car and you use that car for shows in the summer between sort of March, April, September, October sort of time, well, that's six, seven months. So that means that you've got October, November, December, January, February, maybe a bit of March. So you've got effectively 50% of the year where you're not going to use the car, but nor do you want to do work on your car. So what is it doing? So I often think you've got to do one or the other. And I would much prefer to utilise the beautiful, the best, the better weather that we can have. It is England, it's the UK for us. Um, rather than working on cars in the summer, than... I just think that's a bore. I love working on cars, but when everybody's out, everybody's going to car shows, I don't want to be stuck on the driveway doing work unless it absolutely is necessary. If that were, if basically, if whatever the problem is, is stopping me from taking that car to a car show in the first place, then, then I have to get on with it and deal with it. Um, I'll be working on other people's cars in the summer, but it'd be fairly limited because I just want to get out there and go to some car shows and I'll be taking you with me. Um, which comes on to my second point. I will not be revealing publicly where I'm going. 
You can imagine that I will be going to a few obvious car shows in the summer, particularly Ford Focus Mark 1 meets. There has been some uh, issues with one of those particular meets, so the venue has kind of had to change, uh, very sadly. Uh, but this is the way when you're organising car shows and car meets, it's actually very difficult. Uh, and you have to give credit to all the people. Every car show and meet you go to, whether it's one of these meets at the back of a pub and someone has gone as the organiser and gone to the, the owner and said, look, can we use the field out the back? Can we use the car park? We're going to get people in. It's going to be in business in, etc., etc." It takes a lot of organising, I can tell you that. And that's at the higher end of the spectrum. Car shows are another level. So yes, there is money to be made, but really most of the money that car shows make is to make it sustainable. In fact, I think a lot of car shows make absolutely no money whatsoever. The organisers don't pocket anything. They simply need that money to book the venue for another year. So the last year's revenue is being used to book this year's revenue uh, venue. So, you know, it, it is a simple case of they don't make any money out of tickets if you are being asked to pay and meets. If you are going to one of those pub car park meets, make sure you go into the pub and buy something, whether it's a burger, I, I don't know, what, whatever it is, whether I have a drink, not too much though. Um, make sure you do that because if you don't do that, then it's not gonna, the meat isn't going to take place and be sustainable. So, you know, a big shout out to people across the country that organise car shows, car meets, whatever, because that takes some doing. And sometimes you don't get the benefit of enjoying the show because you're organising everything and making sure everyone's happy, everyone's safe, etc. Um, so, you know, big shout out there to those sort of people. Anyway, in terms of the what shows I'll be going to, I will be keeping that very private. Um, not necessarily because I don't want to share this kind of stuff, but I don't really want people knowing my movements. And I think that's quite an interesting point when it comes to my own personal security. And I'm not, I'm not talking about my own security, actually. I'm talking about my cars. I don't really want to be revealing my movements since that somebody actually worked out where I live. I don't really want somebody discovering that there's a Mark III Fiesta on my driveway that can be stolen like that. So, you know, I'm, well, it wouldn't be stolen like that. That's a joke, actually. Um, but at the same time, I don't really want people to be knowing my whereabouts. So I'm keeping that very much under wraps, and I think you can understand why. So in terms of car shows, it'll be a mix and match. There'll be a lot of Ford shows. Beatrix will be only going to one or two, but I'm going to try and make sure that she gets a nice say. She is my main driver. You see her plenty, plenty of times on the channel. Probably not a car that you'll see many times at shows because I don't necessarily think people appreciate them, but that doesn't stop me. Um, and if there's a car show where it's not a Ford show, but it's a long distance show, I couldn't think of a, well, it, it's an obvious car to take uh, in many respects. Although the Focus is equally as capable, just a little bit low mileage these days and a bit more molly coddled as such. Uh, and that's the other thing really about car shows. Um, you know, car shows for me are utterly amazing in terms of what you can expect or what you can see. You find some amazing cars lurking around. The, you don't even have to go to a car show to see some so many cars that are just so out the woodwork, it's untrue. Some cars that have been hiding. In fact, you can find these cars at local car meets. Two of my local car meets, which is free to attend, back of the pub, the same as I've just explained, I've seen some amazing cars, absolutely peaches. And um, it's just interesting what sort of cars appear um, out of absolutely nowhere at these places. And I actually think the small car shows are better than the bigger ones. I do think that place, uh, there are shows like the Festival of the Unexceptional. I think that car show is probably one of the biggest, probably the biggest show on the classic car calendar. It has become like that. Unfortunately, what, I've discovered, what I discovered when I went there is from what a lot of people have said about that show, is that over the years it's been going on, it's slowly been dumbed down to what it actually was about, which was unexceptional cars, somewhat cars that you don't see anymore that were once street furniture, and cars that really nobody ever cared about in the first place. And that's the one thing that people like about the show, or used to like about the show, and that was the big sort of kudos about what that show was about. Yes, last year, 
on taking a bunch of Mark 1 focuses to promote the Focus Mark 1 movement, which was quite successful. We will not be doing that again. If people want to take their Mark 1s, that is their own individual choice, but I will not be going there because I don't consider it an unexceptional car. Uh, I consider it quite an exceptional car, but that's just my opinion. Um, my only respect about that show is possibly it has become too big for its own boots. It's an amazing show. It's an amazing show. And this year it's going to be exactly the same. Have I bought tickets? Am I taking Ruby? I've been asked this question quite a few times. And my answer is probably yes, but I haven't booked. That's a bit risky at this time of the year because usually the tickets would have gone. And the only reason I didn't book was because I didn't actually know um, if I would be going or not. Because the ticket prices have now become extortionate for that show. But then again, is that to discourage people from taking, well, as people have seen, very expensive classic cars to the show that shouldn't really be there like I mean a Jaguar E-Type there was one there last year it's not exactly within the rendition of the show but then there was also a lot of modern stuff out there and I, unfortunately there were many people who suggested that a Mark 1 Focus that that line of Mark 1 Focuses should not be there um, which was met with quite a strong comment reply from myself so, yes the small car shows for me are more intimate you find some really interesting cars and the, the best thing about it is you don't feel as if you've actually been stung for a lot of money now a great festival the exceptional about 40 pounds with fees but you can fill your car for as, with as many people as you want so the idea is that you take your mates the unfortunate thing is i'm a bit of a loner these days and no one wants to come with me in my own car but the, the, the truth is i would always go to that show alone unless there was someone local who wanted picking up from the uh the uh, car community, and I would absolutely, if they if they live within the West Midlands and said, would you, you know, oh, do you want to go to Festival of the Exceptional? Yeah, fine. You know, chat with somebody on the way. It made the journey interesting. But um, at the same time, that's not an invitation, by the way, but just saying, if, if it was to come about, uh, obviously I'd have to know you first because obviously strangers and all that, but I'm a very friendly person. Um, but equally, that for me is £40 on me own because... Apart from the exception I've just said, it would be with other people. So um, it, it, for me, it's it's quite expensive. But if you're taking your mates and it's absolutely no brainer, you know, you chuck, you know, if you all chuck a ten, give ten pounds to the actual person who's booking, then it works out cheaper if there's four of you. Let's say. Um, so yeah, each their own on that one. But most car shows are quite um, that they they are seen to be expensive. You know, you are renting, effectively at a car show, you are paying a ticket to rent a bit of space, a bit of grass, right? Now, obviously, a lot of areas, that grass has to be maintained. It is expensive to maintain grass. There is a lot of venue costs that you are paying for on the day. Um, I don't think some of the shows are worth paying that much, but it depends how much you really want to go. And I'm at that phase in my life where I've not been to half of these places, so I'm going to put a bit of cash on the table. But at the same time, probably in about five, ten years when I've been to all these places, I've kind of worn the T-shirt and I don't really want to go there and pay more money again for the same experience. And although I am wrong about that, actually, and this is what I'm next going to come to, every car show, for me, is completely different. Every car meet. The cars are different. You'll see some similar cars, but you'll see some very different ones every single time. Whether it's your local show, a, lo a local car show, a long distance one away, you will find that every day is different. The weather's different. The people's different. The cars are different. Every Honestly, you don't know what to expect. And that's the adventure about going to a car show. I often get the comments from people who, well, from friends who are non-car people, one of which may be watching me, so I've got to be careful what I say. But in the truth is, my the usual comment that I keep get being given is, you went to that car show last year, Andrew. Isn't it a bit boring going to the same car show? No. And that's my answer. It's not because if unless you're if you're not into cars, I believe that comment does come from people who are not into cars and don't understand the car hobby that's absolutely fine but if you're into cars then it will never be boring i've gone to the prada lombridge i think four times in the last 11 years three times with the p6 last year with beatrix going again soon very soon uh, and that will for me be one of the season openers for me um, and it's brilliant because it's very local and it's just it's just 
brilliant for me. Um, and every time I've gone to the Pride of Longbridge, it's very different. In fact, that show has definitely changed. I think now we're starting to see, well, a lot of these Rover 25s, 45s, MGTFs, you know, MGFs, etc., 75s, they were all relatively you know, second hand, very cheap cars to buy 10 years ago. Now they're all bona fide, should be bona fide modern classics. You know, they are a lot more valuable these days. And I think they're treated differently than they were 10 years ago. So I think that show definitely is changing in terms of the perspective. Um, but for me personally, it's not just a car show. It is the true spirit of car, the car community. Because that, that fantastic Rover car community that got split up, it joins together and it comes back every single year. And um, there is a lovely lady called Gemma Cartwright who works absolutely out of her skin to make sure that that show will continue. And in her own, I think she quoted, she was quoted in saying um, that she will continue it forever, for as long as. So basically, as long as she is around and that there is a motivation to hold that event every 12 months, which is just ridiculously amazing. And again, great organisation. And that takes a lot of organising that show. So fair, that's absolutely fantastic. The other point is about car shows. I find car shows quite fascinating because car shows appeals to everyone, obviously, who's a car enthusiast. But what I see, and I'm this is the reason, this is the thing that I see every car show. I, I find people fascinating. Now, I work in a profession that you have to have good observation skills. You have to understand how somebody else may tick, what, what they may be thinking emotionally. Um, and understanding characteristics and personality behaviour. A little bit of psychology, I like a bit of psychology. And I've been quite highly trained in my job to understand a lot of this and how people behave and why they behave the way they do. And I find it f fascinating at car shows. You will see people who go there and you can absolutely see that they have gone there actively to find friends. They want to get to know people. Some people are walking around initially on their own and then they're going around looking at people's cars with the bonnets open and if the owner is there or somebody else is there they will casually say you know it's a good engine this isn't it and they, they want the, some interaction they want to get to know people and you never know where that conversation might leave you know when somebody comes up to me and as I talk you know if I'm by Beatrix or I'm by another car that I maybe understand and somebody was to just make small talk um, that could lead to quite a long conversation unless they I sense that that person doesn't want to have that long conversation reading body language again um, and I find it fascinating many people are like that that I see um, they very much want to go to a show alone walk away home alone but when they're at the show they want to make friends they want to know people and that's what it's all about and I find that quite special and I really do um, because in many respects if you're into cars you often find people who are into cars as well, because if you if finding people, uh, being friends with people who are not into cars, that's quite difficult because the world of cars is quite a tunnel visioned hobby. You are either in the tunnel or you're not, and if you're not in the tunnel, you're not going to understand what lies in at the end of the tunnel. That was a terrible metaphor. That for me sums up. Um, the psychology of part of the psychology of having non-car friends who don't really understand the hobby as such um, but you can make them understand but equally we try to seek people out who have a, an understanding of our hobby I think that's the, the, the same in every sort of hobby you know people who are keen ice skaters are going to you know obviously get on well with people who also ice skate because you're going to meet people at ice skating with the same same like-minded interest and understanding of the hobby and interest. So I think it's like any sort of hobby, you always seek people out and we like to spend our time wisely. We're busy people and we want to spend time with people that just understand what we talk about. You know, when we stand next to a car and we talk about horsepower and we talk about torque and we talk about boost pressure, the other person most likely is absolutely understands where you're coming from and you can talk that sort of language in absolute comfort. I can't talk about any of that with my friends outside of the car community. I, I can't talk to anybody about that because they don't understand. They don't, They think I'm a bit... Do you get that? 
put that in the comments if you put that in the comments and put, put it on here as long as your friends can't see the comments that is uh your non-car friends but put that in the comments i mean that that's the weird thing i will do a video about non-car friends and car friends and the correlation between the two but i find that fascinating and you have people who are kind of the opposite side of the spectrum who are naturally they go with a few car friends to a show they leave a few car friends and they will hang in large groups um, and th they'll just uh, have a good laugh and um, that's what they go for in fact they spend more time talking to people than looking at the cars which I also find rather you know incredibly fascinating and um, just you yeah, know that's a that's an amazing thing in itself and clearly that person has made lots of friends and you know and uh, that's what it's all about and uh, I think that's what you get after every so often um, I'm sure people are going to ask which side that I'm on. Well, I'm on neither side. Um, well, actually, I used to be someone who would go to a car show alone and leave alone and maybe um, talk to a few people that might be might interact with me. But and again, I have to read the other person um, and whether the conversation is going to go far. And if it doesn't go far, then I cut it short and I move on uh, elsewhere. But um, I've become more of a, a social person over the years. And uh, I would definitely say I'm more, I'm more on the social side. But that's not when I'm filming. But at the same time, I've gone from one side to the other. But I see it all the time in other people. So it's fascinating because car shows, they allow either side. You know, you will feel welcome whether you want to go it alone or be in a crowd or somewhere in between. A car show allows for all of this in a non-pressured environment. And um, that's fascinating. And you see people just behave comfortably and naturally and are being totally themselves. They don't have to um, restrict themselves or control themselves as they might do uh, with other people. I can see the enthusiasm that they have for cars in front of other people. But my question is, would that person show that enthusiasm in front of people that weren't interested in cars? No, it's subdued, it's restricted. And that's, I think this is where car enthusiasts most get their, their fix. Car enthusiasts must get their fix at a meet or a show. I just don't believe you can get a fix without going and seeing beautiful cars and meeting people and socialising um, in a very nice environment, whether it's a field, a car park. I don't think it matters personally. Obviously, some venues are better than others. You know, in a, beauty, a beautiful um, a place like Grimsthorpe Castle Festival, in an exceptional, brilliant surroundings, it just adds to a lovely environment. But switch the blasted music off. Nobody listens to it. Why? Do they I don't understand why there is nobody that comes to a car show to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to see some lovely cars today. But also, I'd like to listen to some music I've never heard before. Um, but I think that would be fascinating as well. Please, if any organisers listen to this, probably not, switch the damn music on. Or otherwise, I'll just cut it off. Seriously. I think there was a car show once I actually went to um, some years ago where that actually happened. Um, you had the sort of loud bellowing music, which as a YouTuber is a problem because it means that unfortunately, like I've been done twice now for copyright, we're about to cut a section of the video out um, that somebody had copyrighted because of the blooming music in the background, um, which was annoying, but I copied it out so I could retain the rights to the monetization of that video. Uh, otherwise, all the funds and money, we're talking pennies, go to somebody else who owns the copyright material. So, and then YouTube's very strict about that. Makes it a pain. But this show, it was horrific. Like, the, the music was something you could drag out of sort of 90s pop hits. Although some 90s hits were great. I'm a 90s kid at heart. Um, but it was really loud. And it was like, we were all going around like, I can't concentrate on con having a conversation or looking at the cars. I just can't stop hearing Britney Spears in the background and... A but lo and behold, either somebody did what I thought they did and cut the wire, or there was just a complete malfunction of the subwoofers. Um, it completely stopped. It completely stopped. And they didn't restart the music. Um, I think it was halfway through the show. It was like one o'clock. It was like an eight to five show. And it was like one o'clock. It never restarted for the rest of the day. And I was like, oh, thank God. Everybody turned around and said, I can actually talk. You know, that's just... 
that's my moan of the day. Cut the music, guys. Any organisers, stop wasting electricity. I am not paying any money through my ticket to pay for that electricity bill. Honestly, it's a joke. No one wants to pay for it, especially the possibly in some shows, electrical gener petrol driven generators to power the blending music and all you can hear is the generator going with the music overpowering the generator to, to deafen it out. Man. So really for me, uh, I'm going to end this episode here on some slight psychology of car shows and what I've just observed and many of you will have observed but it's quite interesting. I will go into this in more detail but I've hopefully I've covered several subjects uh, in detail and car shows and car meets whichever one are the most amazing things and I will be definitely going to some local car meets because a couple of them I can go to after a day after work and to me as a car enthusiast there is nothing that makes me more motivated and keeps me going for a very long week at work where things are hard things are stressful and you're looking for ways to motivate yourself through the week there is nothing better on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever day of the week it is, uh, meet at the end of an evening if you can get off work early enough, which I'm fortunate. Um, there's nothing better than that and it just makes the whole summer swing by so nicely, although not going too fast. Anyway, you take care guys. I shall see you in another episode. Look after yourselves.